At the start, we meet Harem and her colleague Bongil, who are traveling somewhere. Harem is a shaman who are like priestess who have good knowledge of spirits and healing. They are meeting a wealthy Korean family whose newborn son is having some trouble. The baby has been crying since he was born and now has been put to sleep with help of medicines. Harem asks everyone to leave the room and Bongil does a prayer and Harem notices something. She calls the mother and tells her the baby's father and grandfather are also suffering from this. She decides to visit the father and tells us that ghosts, devil, and monsters always try to cross in human world. They are envy of humans and use tricks to come here and harem helps people suffering from them. She meets the father park and he says that whenever he closes his eye, he screams as he feels someone is choking him. He says his elder brother also died of mental issues and Harem notices Park's father is screaming. She says this happens with eldest sons in the family and she saw a shadow of Park's grandfather when she entered the house. She says the grandfather is in discomfort in his grave and is complaining about it to them. She needs to call some grave experts and says it will be costly, but this is required. Next. We meet Kim and Gwen who study graves by opening them and tell the family right places to bury the dead. They recently opened grave of a soldier's mother who has been appearing in their dreams. Kim examines the skeleton and says it is missing dentures and a small boy says he had kept them. The boy says he kept the dentures to remember his grandmother, but Kim says this has caused her discomfort. She wants them back and hence comes in their dreams and Kim has solved the case. Kim is a geomancer who helps families find right burial place so the dead remain peaceful and happy. He is feng shui expert and at night he meets Harem and Bongil and they discuss the baby case. Harem and Kim have worked together in past and she tells him that she has found a rich client. She tells them she feels someone has deteriorated the grandfather's grave, and he isn't happy. Park's mother tells him that grandfather's father's grave is more than 100 years old, and his aunt will not agree to this. Park says he is head of family and sees that baby is in discomfort and is crying continuously. Kim leaves for examining the grave, and he needs the money since his daughter is getting married. He is happy for finding a rich client and meets Park in his car and asks him questions about his grandfather. Park tells him the information and says the coffin must be cremated without opening and details of his grandfather must be kept private. Park says he is doing this against his family's wishes just for his son and wants it to be done quickly. Kim says the district office has to be informed about opening old graves and he eventually agrees. On his way to the grave, Kim notices a signboard which shows to a nearby temple and they arrive at the location. They walk to the grave, which is on top of a mountain which Kim and others find it to be an odd place for a grave. Kim finds this is not an auspicious place and they notice some foxes also on the mountain. They arrive at the grave which is alone there and Kim tastes the soil to check the energy of the place. Kim notices that the grave has no name but some numbers written on it and asks Park who suggested this place for burial. Park says a famous Buddhist monk named Jizun had told them to use this place since his grandfather was a hero in the war. Kim finds the grave to be very plain and Park says in days many people use to rob graves. Kim feels something isn't right and tells Park he won't be able to this and goes away from there. Harem and others ask him what is wrong and Kim says in his 40 years of digging graves, he hasn't seen something like this. He feels the place is very ominous and if they dig up a wrong grave, everyone could die. He says to find foxes near graves is not good sign and at night park shows them their son's photo. He says he saw his son smile many days back and had him after two miscarriages and asks to save him. Kim says the numbers on the grave are longitude and latitude, and he never heard of the monk Jizun. The monk specifically decided to use the place for burial and asks Park if he is hiding something. Park says he does not anything about this, and Harem suggests they should do a ritual to remove the negative energy. 
She says they will first do the ritual and then dig the grave, and she has done this ritual in past. She suggests Park can replace Kim with another geomancer if he doesn't agree and Kim agrees. Next day, they prepare for the ritual, where they bring five farmers born in the year of the pig as per Chinese culture and also five dead pigs. Park's aunt has come for the ritual and harem begins the ceremony and others start praying. She does a dance and applies some blood on her face and cuts the pigs and others start digging. She goes in a trance and others dig and find the coffin and the ritual ends and Kim goes to check it. He sees the coffin is made of best quality wood and they lift the coffin out of the grave. They load the coffin to take it to crematorium and Kim drops a coin to show his respect to the grave. One farmer, while checking the grave, notices a weird snake and kills it, and everyone hears a scream. On their way, it starts raining, and Kim informs Park they should hold the cremation till rain stops. He says it is not auspicious to do so, and Park agrees, and they decide to keep the coffin in a hospital. They bribe the hospital staff to keep the coffin till it stops raining and bring the coffin in more groom. The aunt is not happy with this and tells Park they should rethink this and bury her father in new place. Kim tells Gwen to eat something till Harem comes there and he goes to visit the temple he saw before. He meets Bode who lives in temple and asks him he is knows about the monk Jizun. Bode says he has never heard of him and Kim tells him about his work and the grave at top of the hill. Bode says he heard rumors that the coffin has treasure in it and many robbers tried to open it. All robbers were caught and Bode shows some iron rods, which was left by the robbers. The staff tires to open the coffin to find treasure and harem and Bonglin see this. He opens the coffin which releases something which passes by harem and makes her unconscious. Kim comes to know about this and meets harem in hospital and sees her nose is bleeding. The spirit goes to Park's house and asks his son to open the window to let him inside. He comes inside and eats food and his son is scared on seeing him and sees his wife is dancing. The spirit is angry on them to live a luxury life when he is in pain and kills his son and the wife. Harem tells Kim the spirit will kill all his relatives and decides to perform a ritual to call it back. She starts the ceremony and Bonglin beings to dance and Park, who is at a hotel, feels something. Bonglin is possessed by the spirit and Harem asks him to go back, but the spirit says he will kill Lol. Suddenly Bonglin vomits and Harem says the spirit has left the body and Park gets a call. Kim has called Park and tells him not to open the gate for anyone and says he is coming to meet him. Suddenly Park hears another Kim is at the door but Kim on phone tells him not to open it. He tells Park to open the window and the spirit fools him and comes inside and possesses him. The real Kim is outside the door who opens it and comes inside to find Park behaving strangely. He behaves like a soldier in a war and vomits blood and Kim calls for ambulance. Gwen tells Kim they are going to the crematorium to burn the coffin and asks him to take permission. Kim sees Park is drinking a lot of water and says the fox has broken the tiger's spine. Kim is surprised to hear this and sees Park twists his neck and snaps it and kills himself. Kim sees the spirit in the glass and decides to inform the baby's mother to be careful. Others reach the crematorium with the coffin and Kim decides to call Aunt Lee for her permission. They bring the coffin in and put in chamber, and Kim tells Lee that her father is going to kill the baby. The ghost starts torturing the baby, which makes it cry, and his heartbeat increases. Kim tells Lee this is the only option, and she agrees, and Gwen presses the switch and burns the body. The ghost feels pain and disappears as the coffin is burnt, and the baby is saved, and others do prayer. Next day, Kim goes to meet one of the farmers who dug the coffin and sees he is in pain and is scared. His eyes are bleeding and he tells Kim he has fallen sick from the day he killed the snake. He requests Kim to go to the grave and do a ceremony to bury the snake and Kim agrees to go back. He digs the grave and finds that the snake has a human face and gets scared and feels something. 
He digs and finds another coffin buried, meaning two coffins were stacked on each other. He calls and informs others that that second coffin is standing vertically and others arrive at the grave. They see the coffin is sealed with wires to prevent something to come out and Haram says they should not pull this coffin out. Kim says he could be another family member and they cannot leave him like this and they all pull the coffin out. They see the coffin is quite big and carry it to their car and drive to the temple and meet Bode. Kim says they need his help to bury this coffin here since it's an emergency and Bode is surprised to see such a big coffin. They put rice seal around the coffin and do a ceremony to protect themselves and Lee comes there. She says she has no idea about the second coffin and Kim says as poor his research Lee's father was a traitor. He says maybe that's why her father was buried in an ominous place and Lee shows him a photo. Lee says that Jizun was a Japanese monk and her father worked for him during Korea-Japan War, so why would he bury him in such a place? She tells them to take care of the coffin as they seem right and they decide to burn it at morning. At night, Harem calls her a friend and comes to know Jizun was called as the fox in Japan. We see that Harem can see and talk to her dead grandmother who helps her in her work. While sleeping, Bonglin has a dream where he see Bode, who tells him someone has taken his liver. He gets up scared and goes to look for him and finds him missing, but hears some noise coming. He goes to pig farm and sees the pigs are scared and something is eating Bode and runs from there. He goes and wakes Harem and we see her grandma tries to stop her and Bonglin opens the door. The coffin is locked here and they smell meat on opening the door and see someone has escaped. The spirit broke the coffin and escaped from the roof since the ground was covered with rice seal. Bonglin goes to wake others and Harem finds a helmet in the coffin and suddenly hears a noise. She sees the spirit is outside and is a seven-foot samurai who asks her if any humans are inside the house. Harem gets scared and says she is her servant and there are no humans here and the samurai throws Boda's head in. He comes to know Harem is lying and she runs from there and Bonglin comes and stabs the samurai. They see the samurai is huge and scary who grabs Bonglin and punches him badly in the body. Samurai realizes he is in a temple so he prays and turns into a ball of fire and flies in the sky. Kim and others see this and start having visions and the fireball escapes from there and files away. They take Bonglin to a hospital and next day the news say that a bear attacked and killed many. Kim and Harem feel sorry for Bonglin and Harem says that samurai is attached to some object here. She says the object is making samurai powerful and it does not belong to their country. The doctors tell Bonglin is safe but badly injured and Kim goes back to the temple to find some clue. He finds a book which has a photo in it and sees the iron rods have name of all people in the photo. He goes back to the grave to find answers and Harem and her friends do a ceremony to summon the samurai. They manage to summon it and Bonglin says his master the samurai has killed more than 10,000 people and he repeats some numbers. These numbers are the same written on the first coffin and Kim finds the samurai's body buried. The girls end the ceremony by burning the paper and tell Harem to be careful of the samurai. At night Kim meets others and discusses that Park's grandfather and the samurai have a connection. He shows them the photo of the robbers and says these people were trying to find iron rods. They come to know that during Japan-Korea War, the Japanese shamans put multiple iron cursed rods in Korean grounds. They did this to disrupt the country's life force so they could easily rule over the occupied Korea. Jizun has ordered this task and asked the samurai to protect all the iron rods in his grave. The robbers were Korean people who were trying to find these rods and save Korea. Samurai is now attached to this rod as his object and will kill anyone to protect it. Harem says she can distract Samurai while others find the rod and destroy it and notices something. She sees that Samurai has not attacked Bonglin on any of his tattoos which are symbols of a prayer. They cover their face with similar tattoos and go back to grave and put some fish as a trap. 
The samurai will come out at night and eat the fish and follow it to a nearby tree and others will dig the grave to find the iron rod. Harem's friend prepare a ceremony and put papers in the room to protect Bonglin if something goes wrong. At night they wait for the samurai and after some time we see it comes out of the ground and takes the fish. Samurai starts following the fish and Bonglin also makes a face, as if he is also eating the fish. Harem runs to the trees and prepares her ceremony and the samurai arrives there and others go the grave and start digging. Harem asks Samurai why has come now since the war is over, but Samurai says his war is not over yet. He says Jizun brought him here and Bonglin also repeats the same lines in the hospital. Kim is unable to find any iron rod, and Harem asks the samurai to free Bonglin from his possession. She says he must return back, but the samurai starts walking towards her, and Harem's grandma comes and stops him. Harem runs from there and meets Gwen, who tells her they could not find the iron rod. Suddenly, they see the samurai has become a large fireball, which goes towards the grave, where Kim is still digging. Samurai starts circling the grave and goes inside the pit and captures Kim and asks him for his liver. He stabs Kim with his hand to take his liver, but Harem throws some horse blood on him to stop him. Samurai falls down and others come to save Kim, but are captured by the samurai. They all seize a vision where we see Jizen beheaded the samurai and put an iron rod in his body. He then stitched the body and put in a coffin and buried the samurai here above the first coffin. Kim realizes since samurai represents fire, he must use water and wood to defeat it. He picks a wooden axe and hits the samurai in his feet which releases Harem and Gwen. Kim then uses his own blood on the axe and stabs the samurai with it and hits him repeatedly. Bonglin also coughs black blood and the samurai is defeated and Kim cuts his head off. Bonglin wakes up and is safe, but Kim is badly injured and rushed to a hospital where he is saved. The news show the police captured and killed a bear for the killings and we see Kim is conscious. After some days, Harem and Bonglin continue their work and Gwen continues his work alone. Kim now consults for Feng Shui for building construction and later everyone meets at Kim's daughter wedding and take a picture together.